We've just spent time talking about supplementary and complementary angles. So now what we're going to do is we're going to look at angles that share a vertex. So let's take a look at this first example here. Here is our vertex right here. And one of our angles is 53 degrees. And then we see the other angle comes all the way around here. And so we see that if we were to go all the way around this circle and continue on, so let's say we came around this way, let's go uh, counterclockwise, and we come all the way around and all the way back, that is 360 degrees. So we see that these two angles, this 53 degree one and this x degree one, have to equal 360 degrees. So if we know that the total is 360, we know that one of them is 53 and one of them is x, we can actually write an equation for that. And so then in order to solve this, we're looking for what number do we add to 53 in order to get 360? Well, we can do the opposite by subtracting 53. And when we come out, we get 307 degrees. And it's always good to, to look and say, is this a logical solution? Is it bigger than 90? Is it bigger than 180? Is it bigger than three quarters of a turn of 270 degrees? Yes. So therefore, 307 degrees is a logical solution. All right, let's take a look at this next one here with three angles. The same thing applies. We can start here and we can wrap all the way around and go all the way through this one. And this is 360 degrees. So we see that all of these that share this vertex add up to 360 degrees. So we can again write an equation and say the total of all of them is 360 degrees. So let's put in the ones we know, 110, 110 degrees, 150 degrees, and this unknown one, uh, we can call it y degrees. We can call it y degrees. Now what we need to do is we need to solve. So let's start by adding these two things together. 110 plus 150 is 260 degrees. Now we are looking for a number that when we add it to 260, we're going to get 360. Well, so we could just think in our heads and say, um, well, 100 sounds good. Or we could show it mathematically and subtract 260 from both sides. And we get that y is 100 degrees. Again, check to make sure it's logical. If we were to come here and we were to come out this way, that would be 90 degrees. And so then it would be logical to say that that's about 10 degrees. So 100 degrees seems logical. Let's take a look at another example. This one is going to involve now two variables, uh, which is just going to add in well, two parts. So we need to find one of our variables and then use that solution to find the other. So let's start by finding B. So when we look at this, we see that this right here is a straight line. I didn't draw it very well, but it is a straight line. And so we know that a straight line, when there are two angles, they are supplementary. Again, we just finished talking about supplementary angles. So we know that supplementary angles add up to 180 degrees. So we could look and say, okay, 4B plus 80, if we added this angle 2 and this angle 3 together, we would get 180 degrees. Okay, so let's solve this equation. We need to isolate our variable term, so we need to subtract 80 from both sides. So we have 4B equals 100. What do we multiply 4 by to get 100? Well, you could think money. Or if we divide 100 up by 4, okay, we get 25. So B equals 25. Now when we look at this picture the opposite way, we can see that this is also 
a 180 degrees. The B and C are supplementary angles. So we can say then, now that we know what B is, we can say 180 equals C plus the value of B, 25 degrees. Okay, we can now think and say, okay, what do we need to add to 25 in order to get 180? Or we could subtract 25 from both sides and we get 155 degrees. So we see that C equals 155 degrees. And again, let's check to make sure it's logical. We can come here and say, okay, this is about 90 degrees right here. Um, and so then adding on another, yeah, 65 degrees um, seems to be a logical solution. So then we have that B is 25 degrees and C is 155 degrees. Okay, let's take a look at another example. Uh, it's really good just to, to get as many examples in as you can and see some of the different uh, ways that we can uh, work with um, these angles um, that we've been talking about. So here we have really what, what we're looking for is this uh, W. Now the, inf the information that's given, this is important, A, B, so from A to B, this line right here, okay, is straight. Meaning if we were to jump all the way over here, that's 180 degrees. And we also know that from C to D, okay, or or this this line right here, if we use this as the vertex, is also 180 degrees. So let's see if we can use that in order to find um, find the missing angle of W. So let's take a look and say, can we use uh, line AB? Well, we know that this is 90 degrees. We know that this is W and we also don't know this. So we're kind of stuck there. So let's come here then and say, okay, what about line uh, CD? We know that this is 168 and we know that this, we don't know what this is, but since there's only two of them, we know that they add up to 180 degrees. So we know that 180 equals 168 plus whatever this angle is. Um, we don't even really have to name it. We could just put a question mark, but let's just call it X for right now. Okay, so we can think, what do we need to add to 168 to get 180? Or we could just take and subtract 168 and we get 12 degrees. So we see that this is 12 degrees. X equals 12 degrees. All right, so now let's see if we can use that angle here that we called X um, in order to find W. So now we're going to use this, this, this concept of the line AB is a straight line. So when you add up all the angles, it's 180 degrees. So we say 180 equals this 90 degrees or right angle means that it's 90 degrees. So we have 90 plus W degrees plus this 12 degrees that we found. So if when we have 180, we let's add 90 and 12 and we get uh, 102 plus W degrees. So again, we look and we say, okay, what do we add to 102 to get uh, 180? So let's subtract 102 and we get 78 degrees. Again, let's check to make sure it's logical. If we added 78 and uh, 12, we get 90 and 90 is 180. Um, it is greater than 45. 45 degrees would be about uh, right in there. Um, so to say that W is 78 degrees is a logical solution. Uh, let's take a look at two more examples and then we'll be done here. 
In this example, we need to notice that AB and CD are intersecting lines. Now, it's important that we don't just blow off this information because they're telling it to you for a specific reason. So when we look at it, we see, okay, if AB and CD are intersecting lines, we have angle one and angle three are called vertical angles. And what we see about vertical angles is that their measures are equal. So vertical angles would be like angle one and angle three. And they would also, even though they're not really looking vertical, uh, and the measure of angle two and the measure of angle four are vertical angles and they are the same. And one thing to, to notice here too, um, again it shows they're intersecting. If we have AB being a line, we know that angle one and angle four are supplementary angles. And we could also look at it as angle four and angle three are supplementary angles, angle three and angle two are supplementary angles, angle two and angle one are supplementary angles. So let's take this example here and we are going to look at this concept of using ratios in order to solve this. Because we don't have any information in terms of the angle measures. All we know is that the ratio of angle one to angle two is three to one. So what we need to look at then, if we're looking at angle one and angle two, it says that angle one is three times angle two. So we can look at this. Since we know that angle one and angle three are vertical angles, we can say that since angle three is Q degrees, angle one would also be Q degrees. And since angle four is P degrees, angle two is also P degrees. When we look at this in terms of supplementary angles and this ratio here, we can say that Angle one is three times the size of angle two. So we could say that angle Q is really three times angle P, or the, the measure of angle P. So what this does is it, it actually eliminates Q as a variable. And so what we can do is we can say P plus 3P plus P plus, again, since we have vertical angles, this is 3P, equals the total of 360 degrees. And so when we add these up, 1P plus 3P plus 1P plus 3P, so we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 P's, and that is 360 degrees. So what we can do is we can take and divide both sides by 8 because we're looking for a number when we multiply by 8 will give us 360. So we can take this, divide it here. So we see that the measure of P is 45 degrees and the measure of Q is 3 times P which is 3 times 45. So we know that Q is 135 degrees. Again, let's check to make sure that these are logical. To see that this is 45 degrees, uh, sorry, angle uh, P here is 45 degrees, is a logical solution. It's smaller than 90 degrees, and it's about halfway if you were to sketch out 90 degrees, okay? And then if we have this being three times as big, it seems logical. Again, if this is 90 degrees here, 
um, you could um, have a case that that's 45 degrees. All right, we're going to move on to the last example where we're going to use all of the stuff that we've been doing here. One thing I don't want you to forget is to look at the information that they gave us. This says that line AB, so from here across, and line CD across here are straight lines. Again, this helps us understand this idea of supplementary. Um, so we can use um, that in order to um, help inform us. Uh, another thing that I want you guys to notice is that since we have um, two lines that are crossing each other, um, we are going to be talking about vertical angles. Um, so we see that angle C and this thing over here is also angle C because of how uh, line CD and AB cross each other. And what we can also see is that this angle right here is 120 degrees because it is a vertical angle to this 120 degrees here. So what this will do is this will allow us to find B. So if we know that this angle here is 120 degrees, we also know that it's B plus 3B. Well, we can add B and 3B, and we get 4B, because there's this understood one right here. And so when we take and divide both sides by 4, uh, we get 30 degrees. So we see that B is 30 degrees. Check, make sure it's logical. It is. Then we can take 3, 30, I apologize, and multiply it by 3, and we get 90 degrees. Oh, what do we notice here? Oh, this is 90 degrees. We could have approached that on another way, just so you know, um, but I'm wanting to use this idea of vertical angles um, in order to get there. All right, so now that we have 30 degrees for B, we have 90 degrees for our 3B, let's see if we can use this in order to find C. So we can actually use this cleaner method over here um, because we know that all the way around here is 180 degrees and we know that um, if this is 120 we can take 180 subtract or we can put it equal to 120 plus C degrees and then we're looking for a number when we add it to 120 that will give us 180 so we could subtract 120 from 180 and we get 60 degrees is C okay so let's to check to make sure that that's logical. Well, one other one way you can check to see if it's logical is by just going at it from a different angle. Let's take a look if we have this line of AB and we look at it in terms of a supplementary angle. So going this way. Okay, if this is 120, we add 60 degrees to it, it becomes 180 degrees, which is true. So what we can conclude then is that our angle C is, the measure of it is 60 degrees, and the degree measure of B is 30 degrees. Thank you for watching. I hope this was helpful. Uh, take a look at the other videos that I have posted. Thanks for watching.